administering an abdominal x-ray, obtaining an AP flat plate or KUB, and an upright abdomen. The flat plate abdominal KUB is a simple examination to administer. You'll lie your patient onto the examination table. Make sure that their hands are away from the rest of the area of interest. They can either rest their hands on their chest or safely by their side. Your collimator crosshairs are centered on the umbilicus, also known as the belly button. On heavier or obese patients, you may prefer to find the top of the iliac crest uh, to center your horizontal line. Now the top of the crest is where you put your hands on your hips. You can feel that. Uh, the insides of your hands, you can feel that top part. That's the top of your iliac crest. On an average size patient, it is roughly the same height as the umbilicus. If you have a hard time feeling this, uh, you might try feeling for the ASIS, otherwise known as the anterior sacroiliac spine. The ASIS is a bony protrusion that you feel in the front part of the hip area. It's right in front of the hip. When you find this, you can walk your hands along the ridge moving upward until you feel the top of the crest. Then you can align the horizontal shadow with this anatomical area. Here's an example of a pelvis. You, you may be able to visualize the ASIS ridge and how it is connected to the top of the hip. This will make it easier for you to understand how to walk your hand from the ASIS all the way up to the top of the crest. Your x-ray is done with expiration. In other words, depress your rotor on your generator. Tell the patient to take in a deep breath, then blow out their breath, and hold it. You depress the exposure button, then afterwards allow the patient to breathe. You need a baseline technique. In this case, it's 20 mass at 85 kbp. Here's an example of an abdominal x-ray, also known as a KUB. The acronym KUB symbolizes the anatomy that must be included in every abdominal exam, the kidneys, the ureters, and the bladder, KUB. Included in this image are the pelvis, thoracolumbar spine, the small and large intestines, and the stomach. But most importantly, the kidneys, ureters, and bladder, KUB, must be visualized. As a novice, these organs are difficult to visualize, so let me present a contrast exam to you so you have a better idea of where these important landmarks are. This is a contrasted image that includes three major components of a KUB. The dye is injected into the patient's bloodstream, and within a few minutes, it manifests itself within the renal system. Here you can see the calyces of the kidneys highlighted. Those are those branchy-looking uh, branchy, uh, uh, cauliflower-type shapes you see up here. The outer shell of the kidneys has a thin layer of contrast. You can pick that up just barely, the shadows of the kidneys, and it's shaped exactly much like you might expect a kidney bean. And uh, this is certainly uh, makes it easier to visualize them. The ureters are the long tubes that go from the calyces all the way down to the bladder. This one may be obstructed. That's why we do some of these dye exams, because uh, there should be a good visualization of both of these tubes going down to the kidney. But clearly, we can see the bladder down here, so a lot of the fluid is reaching its destination. Now you can see this is why we have to be very specific in our positioning of the abdomen. You have to include the inferior most portion of the pelvis in order to visualize the entire bladder. We typically use the symphysis pubis as a marker to determine if we have included the whole bladder. The symphysis pubis is the lower bony portion of the pelvis that conjoins at the bottom of the image. You can see this little darker line. This is where it intersects. That little area right there is the symphysis pubis. You can see how the x-ray includes this whole area. Now simultaneously, we must include the kidneys at the top. So positioning must be precise and well executed. 
this may help uh, you to uh, understand why oftentimes you see people taking KUBs and they're taking their time because they've got to include the appropriate anatomy for the radiologist to interpret the examination. Note that the image is displayed uh, or oriented so that their left is on your right-hand side and vice versa. For image quality and uh, evaluation, you need to know that some of the anatomy, uh, you, you need to know some of the an anatomy that has to be included. Now you understand what kidneys and ureters and the bladder look like, so it's easier to identify whether an image has been over-penetrated or under-penetrated. You can probably already tell me the image in the upper left-hand corner if that is an, uh, an appropriate film or not. And it, you, sometimes we can use dark films, but can you see how you're asking a radiologist to find a bladder in that black um, mess there. So also, it's easy to understand in the under-penetrated images how it's harder to make out different shades of gray and identifying uh, different structures or visceral, visceral nuances. A well-penetrated film, like you see in the middle, has a, a centered spine right down the, the center of it, and the multiple shades of gray uh, are ideal for diagnosis. We want to see the air pockets and the air floating in the stomach and within the uh, s large and small intestines. So this is a very good film in the center here. Now often you'll be asked to take an upright abdomen in uh, many different types of offices. Uh, upright abdomens are used to determine if there is air floating abnormally within the abdomen. It is recommended that the patient sit or stand upright for five minutes before administering the exam of an upright film. So the air has to have time to migrate upward. The examination is identical with the flat plate KUB with one exception. It is permissible to aim a few inches higher on the patient to obtain the image. This is because the air rises and may show itself in the uppermost regions of the abdomen. When, when you raise the film, you can actually see the diaphragm under the lungs and the top of the region of the abdomen. Some of the air can collect in these places, and it's critical to identify if there is free-floating air uh, where it's not supposed to be. Now here are two images of the same patient. The image on the left is the KUB that is acquired on the table with the patient's supine. The image on the right is an upright film taken against a chest bucky. Notice how the symphysis pubis is not present at the bottom on the upright. We can only see a portion of the bladder, but you can also see the air in the abdomen has blunted on the underside. The air patterns have changed and give the radiologist an idea of the patient's current condition. When performing the flat and upright KUBs, it's important to indicate which film is supine and which is upright. You can see the circled indicators on the film. Now let's clarify this. You see the markings, the air floating in the abdominal um, image that was taken laying down. But they get more blunt. See the bottom there? When air floats up, you can see an underside that gets kind of flat. It's just a, a, a matter of gravity. And so you can tell, you can almost tell which one is flat and which one's upper upright. Um, but again, we cut off the symphysis pubis down here because we don't necessarily need to see that. We're more concerned with the area just under the diaphragms.